Hey friends, this is Visionary 3D, focusing on the future of 3D graphics. Today, we're going to talk about a revolution in the history of modern 3D applications. WebGPU is a new way of making 3D experiences on the web. It's a new rendering API that gives us access to low-level features of our hardware. This means that we're going to be able to create native-like games on the web, and it's available now. We've been stuck on WebGL for a long time. WebGL is an old JavaScript API for 2D and 3D rendering and it was designed based on OpenGL. OpenGL has been replaced by Vulkan for some time now. So, is WebGPU a replacement for WebGL? Like Vulkan is for OpenGL? I don't think so. I've been experimenting with WebGPU for a while now and I managed to get my new volumetric renderer to work right inside my browser using compute cheaters. I'll get to what that is in a few minutes. WebGPU is not a replacement for WebGL. And it's not a replacement for Vulkan either. It's an alternative. A better alternative. WebGPU is elegant and simple and fast. If you write JavaScript like me, you can use WebGPU for rendering high-performance 3D applications on the web. If you use Rust, you can use WGPU and Dawn for C++ if you want to create native applications. The possibilities are infinite. In this video, we're going to start our journey of learning WebGPU together. Subscribe now if you want to join me on this journey. I'm really excited for this. The only thing that you need to know in order to watch this video is JavaScript. Everything else I am going to explain as best as I can. The focus of this video is on how to get things done in WebGPU. We're not going to focus on super specific details. We're not going to write a lot of boilerplate code. We're just going to cover the 20% that gives us the 80% of the result. If you're here to copy and paste code, there's a link in the description. But if you're here to learn, let's get started. Shaders are the most important when it comes to rendering in a WebGPU. A shader is basically a function that runs multiple times. This definition isn't Wikipedia's definition, it's my definition, because it lets us understand shaders easier. So, a shader is a function that runs multiple times on the GPU. You know what a function is. A function is a box that takes some inputs and it does some things and then it returns an output. Now, a shader is the exact same thing, but it runs multiple times. This is why the GPU is so powerful, it's because it can run these functions in parallel at the same time. We're going to work with three types of shaders in this series. A pixel shader takes the pixel coordinates as the input, it does some calculation based on the coordinates of that pixel, and it returns a value. For example, in this black and white image, we only need to return a single value. Or we could return four values, R, G, B, and A, and we'll get a colorful image. You might have seen full screen pixel shaders on shader toy or video games before. A full screen pixel shader runs for every single pixel on the screen. We're going to call this full screen pixel shader a pass. A vertex shader is a function that runs for all the vertices of an object, like this triangle that has three vertices. A vertex shader takes some inputs and it returns the position of the vertex in 3D space. Now, let's consider a rectangle instead. A rectangle is made out of four vertices. Well, actually no, because the primitive topology type in 3D graphics is still a triangle. If you want to build a house, you use triangles. If you want to build a car, you use triangles. If you want to build entire cities in video games, you use triangles. Everything you want to render, you have to use triangles. So in a rectangle, we have six vertices. Okay, let's consider both of these shaders now. For displaying an object, we need to have a vertex shader and a fragment shader. The vertex shader tells the GPU where our vertices are placed, and the fragment shader tells our GPU how to color the pixels of that object. Now, the vertex shader can also send some data to the fragment shader, but we're going to talk about that in a later episode. With that being said, let's talk about compute shaders. A compute shader can actually compute anything and return any result. The difference is, you can assume it runs on a grid. This grid is imaginary. We don't render this grid. It could be 3D or 2D. 
So a computer calculates things based on the index of each point on the grid and outputs something for each one of those points. We're going to talk about that something later. That was a quick introduction to the shaders that we're going to be working with in this series. But we've been kind of ignoring the CPU until now. These shaders run on the GPU, but we need the CPU to send some instructions to our GPU and tell it to run our shaders. When we write JavaScript, that code is of course running on the CPU, and that code is what manages our application. So we can send some data from JavaScript land to shader land, and this system of passing data to a vertex shader, then a fragment shader, and then outputting it directly onto the screen is called a pipeline. And in WebGPU, you have to explicitly define your pipeline. Data that is uniform across all the individual pieces of our shader is called a uniform. And the individual pieces of our shaders are things that we just talked about, like pixels, vertices, points on a grid, etc. Our goal for today is to build a full screen shader or a pass that allows us to send these uniforms to the shaders. Let me show you what the code actually looks like. We have this class, which is called the pass. In this class, we're going to have access to a couple of things. The renderer holds some useful information and references to some objects that we need. But these three properties are the most important in this class. The shader holds our shader code and it's actually a string. The uniforms is a uniform list, like an array of uniforms. Our uniforms could be of any type, meaning, we're going to have vec2s as our uniform types. We're going to have flow32 values. We're going to have vec3s. We're going to have vec4. We're going to have quaternions. We're going to have all these different types. And these are all uniforms that we're going to be able to pass into the shader. Now, let's talk about this very important class called the uniform buffer. First thing we're going to do is flatten the uniforms, meaning if we pass in classes as uniforms, this is going to take the individual properties and lay them out flat into a float32 array. Next thing we're going to do is initialize our uniforms buffer, a GPU buffer. Now a buffer acts like an array of data that we're going to be sending to the GPU. So let's talk a little bit about how you pass in these datas to the shaders. The shading language in WebGPU is WGSL, which stands for WebGPU's shading language. Now, it's also called Wixel, and we're going to call it that moving forward from here. So I'm going to open up this Wixel offset computer, and here we're going to see how the memory layout works in WebGPU. Now, before we do that, I want to type in some code to show you how WGSL works. So in order to create a class, you use the struct keyword. So struct and the struct name, uniforms. Then you open up your curly brackets, you put a semicolon here, and now you can type in the different properties that this class has. So the first one that we're going to need is resolution, and that's going to be a vec2 of floats. So the way that you define that is by typing vec2, and then these angle brackets, and f32, which stands for float32. Then you put a comma here and you go into the next line. Now we can define another variable. Let's do time. That's going to be also a float32. Let's do a vec3. Let's do a color. And that's going to be a vec3 of float32s. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and click on this process button. And this is going to show me the memory structure of our uniforms. So it starts at offset zero, and then we have two F32 variables. Uh, this is a bug. This should be F32 and this should be F32. So we have four bytes for each float. So in total for the resolution variable, we're going to have eight bytes. Then we're going to have aspect, which is a flow 32. Then we're going to have time, which is a flow 32. And then we're going to have color, uh, which is three flow 32 variables. And then we have padding. Now watch what happens when I move this time variable one down and I'm going to hit process again. The memory structure completely changes. And you can imagine this being a flow 32 array and we're replacing these floats, which each take up four bytes into this array. So the interesting thing that happens is that the offset of these variables isn't what you necessarily think it would be. The memory isn't contiguous. So we have four floats here and then we have four floats here. After this aspect variable, we have color, which is a vec3. 
and we need to put this vec3 inside of this single slot and we can't do that because we have three floats for color so we're gonna have some padding meaning we're gonna have some empty space there's gonna be nothing in here and then we're gonna have color and then we're gonna have time now this uniforms buffer class will handle all of these offsets for us and this class is actually inspired by the 4 engine by Cody Bennett and he helped me a lot in understanding these on Discord so thanks Cody. Now try to contain your excitement because this is where the fun begins. We have this full screen pass class which extends pass and we have a couple of important properties here. So remember when I told you we need to send data to our shaders? Basically a bind group is what we send to shaderland. A bind group is a collection of GPU entities that are made accessible during the execution of the pipeline. For example, let's consider that our uniforms array is an array of numbers. We need to create a GPU buffer and then copy the JavaScript array contents into the buffer. So let's take a look at our bind group layout. If I go to the definition, you can see we create a bind group layout with some entries. The first entry is an object with the binding index of zero. This is going to be important. We're going to get to why in just a moment. The buffer type is going to be uniform because this is a uniform. We're also going to create a bind group. So let's look at that. And what it does is basically it uses the layout, which we just created. And it also has some entries. And this is where you put the data. Next, we're going to create a render pipeline. And this is how it gets done. By the way, you're going to see this device being used a lot. This is a GPU device, which is an object that the web GPU API offers. So after that, we're going to create the render pipeline. The layout is going to be from the layout of our bind group layout, which we defined earlier. And we're going to have this vertex shader part where we create a shader module. We pass in the shader code and the entry point is going to be vert main. And you're going to see why this is important in just a moment when I show you the shader. So after that, we're going to have the exact same thing for our fragment shader. The next important part is the primitive type. We set the topology to triangle list. Now at this stage, I think it makes sense to show you the shader code. This is quad.wixel and this is where our shader code lives. Now, this shader code is the shader code for our full screen quad or full screen pass. And I'm gonna define the struct uniforms here, which we defined earlier. And when you see this piece of code, this could be a little bit intimidating at first, but it's actually very simple. At sign group zero means this is the bind group with index of zero. You can have multiple bind groups. We only have one here, so uh, that's that. We also have at sign binding zero, and this is the same zero as we had here. So if I search for binding, you're going to see where we set this to zero. This is the exact same thing. Then we're going to have a variable, which makes sense. The uniforms change, so it's a variable. We're going to define that with var. And you define the type of the variable uh, with column and the type. It's like Rust and TypeScript. Then we're going to have this piece of code, which I want you to ignore for now. We're going to say at sign vertex, which means the next function that I'm going to introduce is going to be the vertex shader. The name here is vert main, which you saw in JS code. This should be the exact same thing. And it uses a built in variable, a built in input value provides access to the system generated control information. That's from the docs. The basic um, description of this is that this is going to be an input value that the shader expects. And the output is going to be vertex output, which I've defined here. Uh, now we can look at it. So the vertex output has a built in position variable, which is a vec4 of floats. And a built in output value is used by the shader to convey control information to later processing steps in the pipeline. What that means again is that this is an output that the shader expects. So we're going to define a variable here, which is immutable. And when you want to define immutable variables, uh, you're going to use let instead of var. Now, if you take a look at the positions, this is one triangle and this is one triangle and together they form a quad. Next, I have this gets UVs, which gets a coordinate, which is the pixel coordinates. And it divides that by the uniforms dot resolution. And then we have the fragment shader right inside the same file. So we're going to say at sign fragment, this is going to be our fragment shader. We're going to use another built in variable, call it chord because it's the pixel coordinates. Next, we're going to have this return type 
location zero. We're going to talk about what that is in a later episode, but it's basically a VEC4 of floating points. And here I'm getting the UVs, which I'm not using. I can just comment it. And here we return a VEC4, and this is basically a red color. Now, if we visualize this, this is going to be the result. We're going to get a red color. If I change this to one and change the red to zero, we're going to get a blue color. If we use the UVs now, I can visualize uv.x by typing in vec3 uv.x. It's going to represent it as a vec3 and we're going to get a vec4 finally with this constructor. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about WGSL, I'm going to be posting a video on it very soon. But if you know JLSL already, this should look familiar to you. So I can do a lot of cool things now. I can multiply this by sign of uniforms dot time. And what that's going to do is that's going to animate or fragment cheater. Very simple stuff. Now, I want to show you the final code that you need to write in order to make this work. And this is all you need to do. So you're going to define some uniforms just like this. You're going to call new uniform and pass in a value. The value could be a float. It could be a vec3. It could be anything. So for the color, I'm passing in a new vector three, passing in red as the value. And then I'm creating a new instance of this full screen pass class. We pass in the renderer, we pass in the quad shader string, and we pass in the uniforms. With this, uh, we're gonna get this pass. And all you have to do now is create a command encoder. What we need to do is we need to send these commands to the GPU and WebGPU does that by the command encoder. So we need to pass that in. We call render. Here I'm updating the uniform U time. So I'm calling set timestamp divided by a thousand. And that's what's giving us this animation. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this and I really try to focus on the most important parts of WebGPU and not get into too much detail and boilerplate. And I really try to give you the 20% that gives you the 80%. If you want to look into the code and see the specific details of that, the link to that is, of course, in the description. And if this video gets a thousand likes, I'm going to be making the next video very, very soon. So I hope you liked it and I'll see you guys in the next videos.